Hi guys, I realize that it has been a pretty long time since I've made a video, especially one where I'm just talking about what's been going on with me and something a bit more personal, so I will just do a little bit of a catch-up video today. So the thing with me is that I would say my life never really drastically changes at all, right? Outside of maybe moving, that is like the most drastic that it ever actually gets, but I'm still single, I'm still exploring um, new interests, so I guess I really haven't done any personal video in a pretty long time because I feel like it's been more than six months maybe. I started watching the NBA when the season started last year and I decided to follow the Mavericks because that was the team that me and my brother liked when we were teenagers. And watching sports lately has been a strange realization because I've always loved sports. I played a ton of them when I was a kid and I'm a, an athletic person, but I don't know why it took me so long as an adult before I realized I can watch sports when I want. I think it really is probably from childhood because watching sports was one of those things that was restricted from me. So I think after that time, I just forgot about it. And um, it wasn't until now where I kind of put focus into getting back into it and um, realizing that I really enjoy having access to sports whenever I want. So I did watch pretty much all Maverick games. I attended several of them. I went to the Mavericks at Suns opening game way back. I think it was in October maybe. And then I attended several games in LA where the Mavericks were there. Usually playing the Clippers, I was not going to pay for Lakers ticket prices. Overall, it was a pretty great experience. Driving to LA was very tiring though. I don't think I will be doing that anymore. It just doesn't feel worth it because the drive ends up being four hours-ish round trip. And it's just really tiring to do all of that in one day. It ends up being close to what, being out for like seven, eight hours. This has been a very bad season for the Mavericks, so they didn't make it into the playoffs, but you know, the way that their team was set up, I feel like they would have lost very early anyways if they got into the playoffs. So sadly though, right now with NBA Finals being on, I lost a lot of interest during the playoffs. And I think it really is because um, a lot of the teams that I was favoring got out early on. So I was hoping the Kings would win against the Warriors. I was hoping the Grizzlies would win against the Lakers and they all lost. So even though I did have interest watching the Nuggets during the regular season, I don't know now. It's just I don't care who wins that even when the game is on, I don't feel myself as focused as during the regular season. During the regular season, I was pretty hardcore. I watched so many basketball games, sometimes even two a day. And I would find myself, once the game was over that evening, I would be like, shit, what do I do now? Or on the other days where there weren't basketball games, it would feel like there's a big void in my day where I spent hours watching basketball and then now I was just wondering how to fill in that time. But also, recently, I have started watching baseball too. And baseball, that one was a bit random because I think YouTube suggested to me a World Baseball Classic video with Shohei Otani and Mike Trout. And I have only been to one baseball game several years ago. I think five years ago when I first moved here, I went with my friend. And at the time, I wasn't that interested in baseball, nor did I really understand like the little rules, minor details and stuff like that. So I don't remember that experience at all. But after watching this YouTube video, it was very cool, all the tension, even though it's literally just pitching and a batter, right? But those moments can still be pretty interesting. So I had never heard of Shohei Otani, but because of him, I have just been wanting to watch Angels games to see him. I did also attend an Angels game last month, but unfortunately it was a very off-putting experience because I didn't realize baseball fans are disgusting pig of people. <laughs> so the area I was sitting in was just full of trash on the ground, peanut shells everywhere. I just could not 
feel comfortable in my surroundings and that led to me not being able to really enjoy the game at all because I just wanted to get the fuck out of there. So unfortunately, I don't see myself attending any baseball games in the future because that's just gross. <laughs> and um, atmosphere, environment is so important for enjoying anything. Basketball is different because I'd say one, they don't sell peanuts. If they sold peanuts, I'm sure it would be very similar. And yeah, just the stuff they buy, it's easily contained. It's like hot dogs and whatever you call it, baskets and cups. They've, well, I don't know if they have cup holders, but it's just, it's not nearly as gross as that. And then thirdly, <laughs> um, I forget how this came about. Oh yes, this is the most random intro to football. But I think I might have watched some Shannon Sharp interviews with basketball players on his podcast and then it might have suggested Ocho Cinco, Chad Johnson's video to me and so I ended up watching several of his videos and then I realized that I really really like Chad Johnson. I feel like his approach to life, his mentality is very very similar to mine because he does not need acceptance from anybody else, even when he was playing in the NFL. And I really admire that. Someone who is so comfortable with themselves that they don't give a fuck about what anybody else thinks. That is super, super attractive to me. So I love his personality. He also has a great sense of humor. So I guess my intro to him kind of made me start looking into football a little bit. And I have a few friends who watched a lot and have watched it for a while so they know all of the players and um, they're very familiar with all of that and I just kind of dabbled into it a little bit watching podcasts of certain players like Darrell Rivas. I watched two Super Bowls. Uh, they were both ones or Patriots won because my friend is a Patriots fan. And then for this upcoming season I will definitely try to watch um, consistently throughout the season. I just haven't picked a team yet so if you have recommendations, please suggest to me what teams you think I should follow. I would say I'm not interested in Kansas City. I don't know exactly why though, but I just don't think I want to follow them. LA Rams, I think is what they're called. Um, my friend did show me a video of Matt, Matt Stafford that was pretty neat, but I don't know him well enough to just dedicate myself to watching that team and him as a player. But I would also say that my highest priority is wide receiver position because I, I think that that would have been the position that I would play myself, that I love. It's all about speed, it's about agility, and it's just a very cool position. So if there's a really great player in the league in that position, I would probably favor watching his team so I could watch that player. Okay, moving on from sports, I guess for gaming, Diablo 4 did just come out, so I have been playing that for the past week. I did buy Early Access, however, I am already feeling extreme disinterest in the game because the end game to me is really not that interesting. You just run dungeons over again, Helltide events, and you do Whispers Tree, whatever the heck it's called, where you get those Whispers of the Dark and you turn them in. Um, and none of that feels that engaging to me because you just repeat it over and over. Dungeons, I do, of course, I've always loved the fact that you can increase difficulty because they have tiers for these dungeons, similar to Greater Rifts, but eventually the dungeons objectives and just this, it's just static. It doesn't feel that rewarding and so I haven't really had much desire to play it. However, a couple months ago, I'd say two months ago, it hasn't been that long, uh, a friend of mine told me about Hardcore WoW Classic challenge that people were starting to get into. And I don't know why I have never heard of this because I'm sure it's been around for a while, but I was thinking about it for a couple days after he told me about it because I was just very curious about it. Would I enjoy the game differently if I did it this way? And so I tried it out and surprisingly it did feel different. It Because normally when I quest in WoW, I hate it. 
I think it's very tedious and it's boring to me. I only did it because it was mandatory during future expansions, right? But I think I liked the challenge because it, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's just all about like being good at reading scenarios and being good at surviving, playing safe and also other things matter more. So for example, professions, I'm normally lazy. I don't like to level my prof I don't like to level my professions simultaneously while I'm leveling because I just feel like it kind of interrupts the process too much. So I usually like to do it all at the end, spending my gold just power leveling it. But for this, you have to level it at the same time as leveling so you can get the buffs simultaneously and giving you more of an edge to succeed. So I tried mage mostly. I think I've made, I'm currently on my fourth mage and she is 35. She is the highest level that I've made so far and I'm in Stranglethorn right now. So I will probably play that again after this detachment from Diablo 4. I did make two warriors because honestly, I love warriors. They're my favorite melee class but unfortunately their questing experience is so miserable it's just heroic strike spam until you get to level 30 and you get mortal strike and i can't do that also the sad realization that vanilla warriors did not have spell reflection that's one of my favorite spells of theirs so both of that realization i was just like i can't do warrior it's just unfortunately not that fun so decided to stick to mage people are probably wondering why didn't i pick priest because yes that is my beloved class of all time, but I do remember that leveling as a priest is not very fun. I don't remember exactly what the rotation is. I mean, there's Mind Blast and Mind Flay and Shadow or Pain, but it's just not as interesting. So I've always liked the Mage class. Mage is probably my favorite class, offensive caster class. Um, so they have so much control too, so it makes questing very, very enjoyable. You've got Polymorph, you've got Nova, it's just um, Evil K, just like a lot of oh shit situations that really make it helpful. And actually my first mage that I got higher-ish, I got to 29 on, I was Frost, just assuming that Frost would be better survivability, but now I've decided to do Fire just to change things up. And Fire is probably the much better spec. You get more range, you kill things much faster, which is very nice, and I just like it so much more. But also, Another thing that came off of playing WoW Classic is I felt interested again in the lore of WoW. I think I was just playing one session of Classic and I was streaming it and talking to whoever was there. And I guess the Warcraft movie came up again and it had been several years since I've last seen it. And yeah, I don't think it's a an amazing movie, but I think as somebody who really loves Warcraft, I think it's a pretty decent movie for that. Nostalgia and just seeing all of the stuff that you love in-game represented on screen in a very, very good quality format. I mean, I just think the way that the orcs looked, everything looked amazing. So I watched that over again, and when the movie first came out many years ago, it started my interest in wanting to learn about the lore and read the books. So I did that a couple years ago, but then I stopped, I think, after the third book. So now I bought all of the Warcraft books up to the point that I want to read up to, which probably is until Wrath of the Lich King, although I did recently buy the Sylvanas book by Christy Golden. Well, I was just thinking that maybe this book, even though it does seem to go into Shadowlands, I think. Um, she is a character that could be fascinating, and uh, she was like the, what, captain lead ranger of the Night Elves. So yes, I do have that book right here, and currently I actually have been reading a lot, pretty much devouring them, so I will show you guys <laughs> my collection in a second. Right now I'm reading Tides of Darkness, and as you can see, I'm almost done. All right, since you guys last saw my bookcase, I think I had maybe half of the third row filled, but now I am completely out. So today, actually, I should be having my new IKEA bookcase delivered, 
and I was hoping to build it today, but it failed to deliver yesterday for whatever reason, and it's still not here yet today. I really hope it arrives today. So here we have Rise of the Horde and Lord of the Clans. I did read both of these already, even though when I checked the timeline, Lord of the Clans is apparently later in the books. I think you're supposed to read it after Day of the Dragon or something, but uh, Tides of Darkness was taking a while to arrive, and I don't like reading off of my computer. I think that's why I stopped early on the first time I tried to read these books. I was reading all of them off my computer and that's just very unenjoyable. That's why since I started reading again, I'm just buying all physical books and I really have enjoyed just collecting all of these. I just think it's really beautiful. So I think that um, once my next bookcase comes though, I wanna organize them by color and just have it look a little bit cooler, right? Because right now it's just, it's just all random. Rise of the Horde, I would say, is number one. And then number two, The Last Guardian. I finished this one really fast, in like two days. I really, really enjoy the Cadgar character, and I just hope that his character lasts longer, even though from my understanding, I don't think he's part of the story for very long, and that sucks. Anyways, after this one, Tides of Darkness, that one I already showed you, that one's in my room. And then after that, Beyond the Dark Portal. And then after that, Day of the Dragon. <laughs> and then after this one, I think it's supposed to be Of Blood and Honor by Chris Metzen. That one, I think, is not an independent book. I think that it's only part of a series of books that I didn't know about because at first I just tried to, you know, look it up on Amazon and I didn't come across any results. So I did find that one on PDF and unfortunately I think I will probably just read that one on PDF instead of buying a physical copy. And then I'm pretty sure after this book is Arthas. This one I have been really looking forward to because I just always had little bits of understanding of Arthas and Jaina, but not knowing anything further. And also, Wrath was a very enjoyable expansion for me. I did the raid. That was the first expansion I got to raid. I did the Heroic Lich King boss fight, and I think I killed him on 10 man, never on 25, but I would just love to know the story behind it. And then after that is Night of the Dragon. And then I guess after this one, Sylvanas would technically fall behind this one because she includes, you know, storyline from later expansions. I'm sure I would like to get back to other genres and other books. Like for example, this one, Outlander. I know this has been made into a series. I don't plan on watching it because I really just prefer reading it in book format, the original way. And just there's way more detail in books, right? You get to know people's thoughts without you know, a voiceover on a show or something. And the premise of this book is very interesting to me. So I would like to get to it. Okay, and lastly, I want to show one more quick thing that I got done recently. But first I will leave you with this nostalgic video. What a good girl. Okay, so the lighting, unfortunately, is not so great there. I have considered whether I wanted to buy a lamp to shine over it all the time, but I guess it would just require some complication because if I wanted it to be clean with no wires, then I would have to find a wireless one that goes off of batteries, and then I would also have to install it above the painting and whatever. I'm not sure if I want to go through with that, but I decided to hang it here because First off, if I hang it out in the living room and I wanted it low to the point where I could be able to enjoy it, then my cat might be able to jump on it. So my Bengal cat, Bao, he jumps very high and when I first hung it out there, he almost reached it and that just really bothered me. The thought of worrying that something prized like this could be destroyed by him and his curiosities. So also, I just figured 
this being low the way it is, I enjoy it a lot in here because I see it every time I come in my bedroom. I see it when I wake up in the morning and I can just easily glance up when I'm working at my desk and just appreciate it that way. So I get a lot of glances at it the way it is right now. But I chose this picture because it is my favorite picture of Riley. It encompasses a lot of things for me. So landscape, this is in Glacier National Park in Montana, which is one of the best national parks I've ever been to. It's so, so beautiful there. It, of course, includes Riley. She is the single most important being to me in my entire life. I love her so much and I wanted something that represented a really great memory to remember her by. So I just had this idea to get this done last year. I'll talk about what the process of commissioning this piece was like, but just to get an idea of how this picture came to be, I think I was doing a drive-through in Glacier National Park with her because for those parks, dogs are not allowed on trails, and I actually think even without that rule, I wouldn't be so fond of bringing her on them either because they're usually very populated with people, and those are entirely not the scenarios that I want to hike with her in. So whenever I did these road trips with her and we were passing through national parks, I would do one day where I would drive through with her and just stop here and there where I thought it was really beautiful and take pictures with her. So. This was a random one. I guess since in California here there's not a lot of water around that's easily accessible and not also in the same beautiful way as Montana. So they have like streams and rivers. I have this really nice picture where um, I was trying to just teach her how to swim at one of the rivers in the park and yeah from certain vantage points with like the mountains in the background. It's just gorgeous. So seeing I think I was just driving by one body of water and I decided to park and I went down a slope with her and came across this area it was also not populated at all which is perfect so I decided to put her on the rock and take some pictures uh, this was a pretty expensive commission and I expected that because I care very much for quality and I would not want to get a piece done unless it was great and I knew that in order to have something great that you usually have to spend more. So I found a wildlife artist. I was searching for a while because I didn't want a usual pet portrait artist because when I first looked at them a lot of them are boring. I don't like pet portraits. They are just the dog and usually it's a very, I don't know the correct art term for it, but it's not realistic depiction it's like abstract you know they're kind of like blurred it might be oil painting so it's uh i don't know how else to explain it but i wanted it literally to be a recreation of a picture but i didn't want to just print out this photo and hang it on my wall i think that's so lame so i searched for a while and i think wildlife fit my criteria very well because first off they are drawing animals and they draw them very well but they also draw these animals in their natural habitat. So the landscape in my picture is just as important as Riley in the picture and I wanted to make sure they were capable of doing both very very well. So I searched for a while and I came across the artist Alex Fleming. He is from the United Kingdom. Ever since the very beginning of contacting him, everything went super super duper smooth. He communicated everything at the very start. My, the expectations, the fact that he wanted you to be satisfied, so don't be afraid to speak up if one of the um, pictures that he sent you while he was working on it was not to your satisfaction. And I just loved that whole process because communication with me is always one of the first things that tells you what kind of person they are. Are they responsible? Are they professional? Will they be positive to work with from start to finish and that in itself is the first most important criteria I need before I decide I want to give you all this money. <laughs> so um, I reached out to him end of November 
and I told him that this wasn't something I was in a rush to have. It was an idea that I wanted and since Christmas was coming up and a lot of people get uh, work done during that time for gifts and whatever, I told him it's fine, you can handle your Christmas commissions first and do mine afterwards. So my, um, what's the word? Him handing over this artwork to me occurred, I think, late January and shipped everything fine. He protected it extremely well. And then after that, I took this to a local framer. And from that point on, I think it was like three more weeks before I was able to get it back to me. I am a pretty minimalistic person. So the outside frame, I didn't want anything too crazy. And since I think it's pretty obvious with how I decorate the interior of my home, I don't decorate really. I'm sure eventually, many, many years past, I would love to decorate my home. But right now, with my lifestyle and just the fact that I don't own a home yet, I am trying to be practical. So I primarily have been choosing white because it's easier to match with. But in the future, if I do design, I would definitely want to make it colorful. Pops of color, right? Uh, mixed in with all the white stuff that I already have. So price-wise, I believe, I don't know exact numbers, but the ballpark is pretty accurate. The artwork in itself, I think it was six to seven hundred dollars. And then the framing costed, uh, I think, three fifty. So overall, this piece costed close to a thousand dollars. And this is really the first piece of art I've ever owned. I am not somebody who hangs pictures around. I don't have pictures anywhere. The only picture that I have is a small framed picture of myself when I was young. I don't even know why I have that picture still, but I think it's just because I it's on a horse frame from when I was a child and I've always had it and I guess kept it with me and I look pretty cute in that picture as a little girl, so I just have it hanging around, but I have nothing else. I don't have pictures of family, friends, none of that. So when I do decide to hang something up, it is extremely meaningful to me. And I really try to take as much random moments throughout the day to just kind of stare at this piece of artwork and admire it. And really, I think he did a fantastic job. So, so good. I wouldn't be saying this if I didn't feel that way, obviously, but I am so happy about this and uh, happy to share it with you guys. So yeah, thanks for catching up with me and hopefully I will do another one of these videos again soon. Honestly, I do enjoy making videos. I think just lately I don't feel like that much has been going on with me so there isn't something to make a video on. but. Yeah, you know, there could be random stuff that I could enjoy and make a video on and just more logging. I feel like whenever I make these videos, it kind of details a moment of time in my life that I could look back on. So, yeah. See you guys in the next video.